The following commercial rafting incident occurred on May 9, 1992, on the New River in West Virginia. It resulted in a fatality. The names of those who survived have been changed. The purpose of this case study is to provide an actual scenario for students to study and to assist in accident prevention. It uses fault tree analysis and the underlying factors to analyze the accident. On the New River, the Keeney Rapids are comprised of the upper, middle, and lower Keeney. At lower water levels, they are distinct back-to-back -back rapids. At high water, like on the day of the incident, they merge together into one continuous rapids. The normal route is to run the upper Keeney to the right of Whale Rock, named for its enormous size. Behind Whale Rock, boaters work to river left which sets them up for a run through Lower Keeney. At high water, it helps to avoid the large waves in Middle Keeney and to avoid Flint Rock, which is a strainer and potential killer. The first part of the trip was fairly normal. The rafts maintain a relative tight formation and good spacing between rafts. There was no designated lead raft, and the lead was shared among the other guides. Mark did not lead on the first part of the trip. The group had lunch just above the Keeney Rapids. The Keeneys were the first rapids run after lunch. Also, they were the first Class 5 rapids on the trip. The videographer followed a kayaker running the normal route behind Whale Rock, working toward river left in the middle Keeney. This sets him up for a clean run through lower Keeney. Meanwhile, Mark's raft flushed sideways into a large wave in the middle Keeney. Four of the six passengers were ejected from the raft. The ejection is not shown in the video. He rescued two of the victims and nearly rescued Cheryl before entering Lower Keeney. To his credit, he did a remarkable job of nearly rescuing everyone given the circumstances once the incident occurred. The other swimmer can be seen flushing down the chute next to Flint Rock. Cheryl washed onto Flint Rock where she died on the strainer. Mark attempted to eddy out behind Flint Rock, surfs a hole, loses a passenger, and floats downstream, unable to rescue the second swimmer. The rest of the group passed by seemingly unaware of the severity of the situation. The second swimmer had a long and nasty swim. It was not fun. The other rafts picked her up downstream of Lower Keeney. At this point, the group is too far downstream to render assistance to Cheryl, although there was not much that could be done to save her at this point anyway. Mark needed assistance in Middle Keeney. Fault tree analysis is a method to identify the underlying causes of an accident. The underlying factors were used to provide structure for the analysis. An amalgamation of several sources, they emphasize Bird and Germain's basic factors. The underlying factors were subdivided into human, environmental, and equipment factors. Human factors include physical or physiological capability or stress, mental or psychological capability or stress, knowledge, skill, motivation, leadership and group dynamics, pre-planning, and travel speed. Typical physical and physiological factors are noted. A minor consideration is that the group had just finished lunch and this can affect performance. Typical mental or psychological factors are noted also. 
Mark made a poor decision. In his deposition, Mark noted that he decided to go first. He made this decision without consulting the trip leader. Although Mark was an experienced raft guide on the trip, this was his first run of the year at this high water level. He knew the routes, but may have been a little rusty. This may help explain why he didn't make the correct move in the Upper Keeney. Knowledge includes the common practices and procedures of the activity. The rule was to keep everyone in sight, and when this was not possible, to keep the raft in front of you and behind you in sight. Mark was out front by 10 to 15 boat lengths and was out of sight of the rest of the group. Unaware of his plight, the group was unable to render immediate assistance. In his deposition, Mark indicates that he made a wrong move in Upper Keeney, which kicked him off course and sideways into the big waves in the Middle Keeney. Motivation includes cultural norms and peer pressure. Although this was Mark's first time on the trip as the lead boat, he indicated in his deposition that, I like running first. What he says he likes to do is different from his actual behavior. Take your choice on this one. There was some potential miscommunications where Mark made the decision to go first without discussing it with the trip leader. There is an issue of supervision. In her deposition, Diana noted that they like to keep a relative tight formation with several boat lengths between boats. Except for Mark, the video shows a relative tight formation as they ran behind Whale Rock. The rule was to keep everyone in sight. Maintaining a tight group allows any of the rafts to transition from general supervision to specific supervision and render assistance to other rafts. Out of sight, the other rafts were not able to help pick up Mark swimmers. There is some confusion regarding the role of the trip leader. In her deposition, Diana indicates that her role as trip leader was primarily management tasks such as collecting waivers and doing the pre trip talk. She claims that she had a minor supervisory role on the trip. Until the incident, the trip was organized and run like most of their trips. Again, they could clarify the role of the trip leader. Traveling too fast or too slow was not an issue. As noted, other than Mark, they had a relative tight formation. Environmental factors include weather and weather changes, terrain and terrain changes, and animals and plants. Weather or changes in the weather were not a factor. Regarding terrain and terrain changes, it was a high water trip. The video at the lunch stop shows the water into the trees along the river bank. The terrain changed also. At high water, upper, middle, and lower Keeney merge into one continuous rapids where the large waves in middle Keeney can easily upset a raft. This makes assisting in rescues much more difficult. Animals and plants were not a factor. Equipment factors include inadequate or inappropriate clothes, inadequate or inappropriate equipment, and inadequate maintenance or wear and tear. Inadequate or inappropriate clothing was not an issue. Everyone wore life jackets and were properly dressed for the cold water. Improper or faulty equipment was not a factor. There was no evidence that maintenance or wear and tear was an issue either. The previous fault tree analysis was a hybrid version. Revised factors that were non applicable dropped out of the tree, including motivation, pre planning, travel speed weather and changes in the weather, animals and plants, and the three equipment factors. Second, since the fault tree analysis used underlying causes to determine failures, the remaining underlying factors were framed using this terminology. In summary, this case study is useful in explaining fault tree analysis. If desired, the analysis can easily aid in an investigation and form the analysis portion of a written report. Second, this case study can be used to discuss the accident process and accident prevention. Use your favorite model or simply use the fault tree analysis to stimulate discussion. Was the accident avoidable? And if so, what steps could the trip leader or company take to avoid the accident? Supervision is important. 
consider discussing supervision and its role in preventing this accident. Third, if the case study is used to discuss negligence, there are four components which are necessary for negligence to occur. There needs to be a duty to the plaintiff or injured party. There must be a breach of duty. There must be proximate cause between the breach of duty and the injury damage or loss. Note that this case went to trial in the county where rafting is the major industry and the jury found the company not guilty.